What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Here we go. My good. Ladies and gentlemen, Kai of Late Night! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> Let's go! What's up, brother? I appreciate you What's doing this. Guys? Thank you for taking the uh, the time out of your day. Uh, do me a favor, properly introduce yourself. Uh, please let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now and plug anything and everything. All right, so I'm Kai Farah from a band called Late Nine. Um, I have some other side projects as well that you guys will hear later this year. Um, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Late Nine is a rock and metal band. We're independent. We're trying to get to the top. We get some new music coming soon. We're really excited. I'm super happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, be sure to check our stuff out. Let us know what you think. You know, maybe comment on a post or two. And uh, yeah, let's get this shit going, man. Hell Good yeah. Uh, I appreciate you doing this, man. We've been buddies for a little bit, uh, but never had a chance to actually do this. You said a couple more side projects coming out later this year. Are you allowed to tell us any details whatsoever? Is it going to be a completely yeah. different sound than, than what we're used to for late nine? So, yeah, so I got... um. I do have a band called Southfield. Um, that's like a passion project. It's like melodic hardcore. That's with my buddy uh, from my hometown. And we're releasing music soon. We already released about five songs, but we're releasing a full album. And then I have a deathcore project called Entropy that I'm dropping soon. Um, been teasing some uh, clips of that. So you can see that if you look up Entropy Boston on uh, Instagram. So yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, it's gonna be super cool. I'm I'm working like a workhorse. I'm gonna say like no no days off for you. It sounds like no <laughs> days off for you. You're just nonstop recording, 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 working uh, social medias, etc. Doing plenty of stuff. That is mm -hmm. awesome. that is awesome. High Hills doing numbers. I saw that now trending out now. How many uh, how many more singles do you expect Late Nine to release in 2024? Um, three at, le at least three, um, but we're aiming to do five or six. Uh, we're working on a record right now, but we're going to kind of water waterfall it because it seems like that's the best way to go about it. Um, you know, focus on one song at a time, get the best result, you know, instead of dropping five songs, most people will only like cling to one. And, you know, I mean, I feel like it's harder to uh, get people's attention to like a 20 minute record as opposed to a three minute song, you know, did I so. did I read correctly that you also do like band promotion on the side as well? Yeah, I do. I um I work with lots of people, you know, that, like and I uh, get them in touch with other creators, reactors. I also do like covers for bands. Um, you know, they they'll pay me to do that. I also my main uh my main thing is vocal coaching. I actually coach plenty of kids, uh, plenty of students, plenty of uh. Just all, all over the world, too. It's super cool. I get a great little community going on, a little business. It's 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 really fun, you know, minus, m minus the money. It's it's all about just the, <laughs> the fun and teaching them and and helping them and watching them grow and join bands and release music. It's a it's a beautiful thing, you know, it's bringing beautiful. someone up from Te the, teaching from the, the ground and then they hit it running. Teaching yeah, the awesome, kiddos man. what, what you cool. do. And you're you're a superb vocalist, bro. Yeah. You have a phenomenal range of just crazy high pitched singing, but at the same time just low, nasty growls. Who who way back in the day way back. made you even want to pick up a microphone and just <laughs> just experiment with your with your voice? Uh, it's just it's kind of just through my family. Um, you know, my mom's like a really good singer. My dad's a phenomenal guitarist. Um, and they've been in bands together and my dad's been in plenty of bands, you know, and I've, I've just watched, I mainly watched my dad play shows growing up. I've seen my mom like play a little bit, but that was a little before I was born for the most part when she was going hard with it. But my dad, you know, I jam with him. I'm going to jam with him probably after this. We usually rip guitar on Fridays and stuff, but he's, he's one of my biggest inspirations, cool. you know, and it pushed me to want to want to do what he was doing. You know, he was like, you know, playing and playing around the new England area, 
touring around it with his uh, bands and stuff. And I just wanted to bring it to like a different level and really try to experience the, the high life around music. So, but then there's obviously massive inspirations and in bands from glam metal to metal core to post hardcore, death core, you know, hardcore, all that stuff. So I'm into all sorts of stuff. And that's where the variety of uh, vocal ranges come from because there's so much stuff that I clung on to and really wanted to learn. We're going to do a couple of fun questions before we get into the trivia, but every, every band has the mm-hmm. worst show ever. Everything went wrong at this show. Do you recall mm-hmm. that particular gig? <laughs> what did you learn from it? What advice could you give on, on this went wrong and, you know, have a plan B, et cetera. All right. So we, it was, it was funny. All right. So this is in New Hampshire. It was that one of our favorite venues. Um, and, this was actually with <laughs> with late nine, um, <laughs> and we had before we had like our big old you know touring rack to like use for like live performance. We had a backtrack system that we'd hook up to an iPad, and the click track is panned to the right, but the backtrack system wasn't set up properly because there was a specific member in the band that did more of that stuff like focused on that you know i'd bring the merch i'd do that like everyone had their own jobs and this was uh opening or doing direct support for monuments oh wow believe it or not it's the big one uh, so yeah it was fun uh but like <laughs> what happened is we had to play without the click track so we couldn't play any of our new music off of thanks to you like that ep we had to play our old ep that we hate um <laughs> So you found this out like like minutes before, like while setting up to play in front of the audience, you realize this and then are like, okay, we got to scrap the whole set and do, but, but as a seasoned vet, you you just know the, you know, the whole catalog, like the back of your hand. Yeah. So we pulled it off um, and the, the crowd didn't notice anything, you know, other than the fact that we were playing older songs, Uh, but the performance was fine. The band was just really upset. I remember one of my one of my members was outside, like in his car, just so so <laughs> down and upset. And he was like, "I swear to God, in that moment, I was thinking, like, why am I even doing music? Should I just be a fucking weatherman?" And when he said that, man, I laughed my ass off. A weatherman. <laughs> it was just so. It was just. It was just so funny, just because of how down he was about. It. I was so mad about it. It it was a whole situation, but Dang. we learned from it. And thankfully, um, the guys in Monuments were super cool, and they actually were very impressed with the material we played. But we wanted to we wanted to play the material we wanted to play, and right. it, it caused a whole conundrum. It was it was very anxiety riding. I was like up there, like, all right, I got to control the crowd because instead of eight songs, we got five. So right. I need to make this set last, you know. So that was really tough, and that was a lot of stress on me. But it was a nightmare at the end of the day, you know, but we still got through it. <laughs> I'm sure you've been asked uh, this next question a bunch, but can you can you explain why the band is called Late Nine? Because um, we're all born in the late 90s. And we had, we, we I mean, there was, there's plenty of different uh, names that, you know, were ideas and stuff, but you know, we decided it just sounded cool, you know, take the 90 out of it, just late nine. No one's name's late nine, so it's easy to look up and find. There you go. And we're all like 19, 96, and 97 babies, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it just, it, it works. Do you recall, do you recall <laughs> too any... too much of a crazy background. <laughs> do, you, do you remember any of the, the old band names that you almost picked before deciding on late nine? So I didn't, I didn't name late nine. So I was, how late nine happened is like, so there was two members, one who's not in the band anymore. Um, and they decided to name it that. Um, and when they first took me in, they had hired me. So they were paying me to write. Um, I wasn't even an official vocalist. You know, they had just fired their vocalist at the time. And then I ended up just taking the reins on it. And over time, you know, I pushed the band so much and did all this. So I kind of took control of, you know, the social medias and the promoting aspect. 
And I know like I'm the face on a lot of stuff, but uh, I wasn't the first member of Late Nine. You know, I was actually one of the last members to come in as opposed to the newer members since the member changes. Right. Not a lot of people know that, but I, it's I my know. baby. And um, it's it's a yeah, it's a great band. And we have a lot of fun. And we got lots of cool stuff coming. I'm really excited. But yeah, the the name uh, being con- conceived had nothing to do with me. <laughs> I just thought it was cool. I was like, yeah, we're all born in the late '90s, so that's sick. It works. Uh, did you you brought the yeah, hot sauce? Works. You brought the hot sauce for the trivia. Um, sadly, Excellent. yes. <laughs> what Here we are. to to do the trivia? Whether you get it right or wrong. Whether you get it right or wrong, I am going to do some really, really hot hot sauce. I'm going to do hot sauce from hell. Hot sauce from hell right here. Oh, my God. And uh, I just grabbed Tabasco. You're good. You're good. Don't worry. Uh, but I need to know if there's a movie or TV show that you've seen more than anything else. Because I'm telling you, my job is to stump you. But again, whether you get it right or wrong, I'm going to do the hot sauce. But if I stump you, we're going to do two questions. Uh, take a little swig. You don't have to go crazy. Just take a little swig of the Tabasco. Well, that's all good. Uh, but what movie or TV show would you pick? Um, let's see. X Men Three: The Last Stand. X Men Three. I'm a huge Marble Head. The last. <laughs> the last stand. Okay. Yeah. That just came off the top, man. I had a whole entire other plan, and I was just like, you know what? I, I feel like I know this movie so well. I, I think I'll do pretty well. We'll see, though. Okay. It's not on my normal trivia site, which doesn't happen very often, so I need to look up uh, different a trivia from a different place. Uh, do you have any, do you have any okay. like, odd phobias or anything, anything that, like, freaks you out? Um... Yeah, I don't like elevators. Um, I usually get like super dizzy um, no elevators. from them. I I do not like like VR. Oh my god, dude, it terrifies me. Like if I put on a VR headset, I like almost puke and fall over. I hate spiders. Like it gets you, it gets you dizzy like instantly, <laughs> so, like equilibrium wise. Oh yeah, In- instantly. Like the second I click an analog and it starts moving, I feel like I'm gonna fall. Uh, so terrified of VR, um, sadly, because I thought it would have been cool because I had been waiting since I was like able to know about VR before it was a thing. And then I found out I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's lots of lots of stuff that that freak me out. Um, I'm like a pretty high anxiety person. So like there's there's a lot of different little little things that will just boom trigger me right into like fear you know it's interesting um but i feel like that gives you more stuff to more emotions and feelings to write about and write music i feel like i have so many little things and quirks that bug me and like little things about me we've all got that, some uh, we've all got some give me give me give me so many different uh so many different feelings but my my main thing is definitely spiders i i can't i can't like i have a friend that try sending me pictures of like how cute his tarantulas are and i'm like bro you ever brought that thing near me i'm sorry but i nah, squeeze it i don't even want like, it <laughs> like i can't i can't i can't fuck with that but it's over. i feel like a lot of people that's their main phobia a lot of those is like the arachnophobia but what about you do you have any weird phobias i, I do i'm i'm uh, afraid of heights if i don't have like a safety this like i'll go on a roller coaster that goes all the way up and then drops i'm freaking out the whole time i've never skydived but i would if, if someone like kicked me out of of the plane and like mm-hmm. here i am but uh if i'm like on the top of a roof like looking over that's where i'm like freaked out i feel like someone's gonna accidentally like bump me and i'm just gonna topple you. topple over and just be like ah, just literally just just go yeah you get that weight in your stomach splat <laughs> There's me splat right there. <laughs> Let's do some trivia. Like you get that that weird weight in your stomach. I totally feel you, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You need like a if I look over something, like if I look over a building, like I need there to be a railing. If For not, real. I'm I'm not looking there, over. That I need building. I need the railing like you. up to my neck too. Like so, I'm just like, it's, yeah, yeah. You'd have to like <laughs> lift me up to topple me over that motherfucker. But uh, here we go. Trivia. 
X Men. Let's go. X Men Three: The Stand. First trivia question. In the very beginning of the movie, what does Jean Grey show Charles and Magneto that she can manipulate? What is the example that she manipulates? Oh my God. Um, she does something with nah. her with her telekinesis or telekinetic powers. Doesn't she? She. I really. I'm stumped right now. Why can't I think of it? That's such a, like a little part. You're, yeah, it's such a small part. Of the, like it's a big part, obviously, but it's such a small detail. Three. Honestly, just 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 hit me with it. She lifts a car on the street to to show her okay. that the power. She lifts cars on the street is the answer. Uh, enjoy the hot sauce when when you're um, when you're suffering from the, to the Tabasco. Please let us know how you do vocal warm ups. Let, let you know how I do vocal. Warm-ups. Yep, after you're suffering, like like ten minutes, twenty minutes before before you step on stage. What do you, what's your what's your ritual? Well, I definitely wouldn't be doing warm-ups with this in my throat. <coughs> but um, <laughs> I'll do, like, singing scales, like minor and major scales. Um, that's that's spicy. Um, I'll do, like, lip rolls. Um, I like to blow into a straw if I have one. I usually blow grab, into a like, straw? A drink. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean? Just like, like singing into a straw? Like you take like, say you have a straw and you, you sing into the straw because it holds the note. It's like a straight note, I guess. It's it, it's actually very helpful if you look it up. Um, I I've have one of those Doctor Vokes bottles coming in soon, with like a mask too for like a humidifier. Is that the, is that the spray mist thing? Shows. It's like a big. It looks like a bong almost. Um, it's like got a straw that you blow into, but it also has an attachment. That you can set up where you can like breathe in like humid uh, humid air uh, like a humidifier but it's not the vocal mist it's called dr vokes um that's coming in soon because i heard a lot of good reviews but yeah i usually do like your main like singer warm-ups for screaming i just slowly eat into my compression and distortion and like it does look like a bong between like fr- i know right dude it really does but yeah, for screaming warm ups, I, I keep them just like, keep simple, you know, A E I O, yo, stuff for like fry screams. And then I slowly get the uh, the highs in there and then the lows and switch stuff up. And then I'm ready to hit the stage. And usually, it, what I think I, I'm killing it, bro. I <laughs> crush it. I go out there and I do what I can. You got to blow, you got to blow bubbles to, to hit the high notes. I get it. I get it. <laughs> exactly bro gotta blow gotta blow bubbles <laughs> one one more x-men trivia and um if i am able to stump you while you're suffering on the tabasco again please tell me this time more of a fun question let's say hypothetically a sick new world or blue ridge something along the lines of that as far as the size of the audience late nine just played a show there wherever that may be tonight we're partying i know your sober sober life that's awesome Three years, congratulations! By the way, uh, Thanks, but man. but uh, what would be the party atmosphere after a show like that, and or munchy meal? Let's say they have a catering service. Uh, so think about that for a second as we as we do the trivia for X Men. <laughs> One more time. Uh, I told you they were going to be hard. By the way, Stan Lee, Stan Lee used to make a cameo and almost in fact in uh, in every marvel movie up until his death in fact he did so many before he died they came out later what is stanley doing in his cameo in x-men 3. what is he actually doing what is he doing i feel like he's isn't he like he's like a parent to someone right it doesn't say no. that, but that's not anywhere near what we're looking for. I'll give you one more try. Okay. 
Um, he's like physically doing an like act a, of something. Oh my gosh! Is he like? Is he sitting at a uh, desk like reading something? <laughs> and God it's damn Stanley. Stanley is using a watering hose and watering the water that Jean Grey is oh, actually okay. manipulating in that scene. It's an additional yeah, it's, it's like additional like part motion. that she that she's still showing really off to uh, Magneto and and uh, Professor X or yeah. Damn. So hot Bro, sauce I again. No worries. Right. It it happens all the time around here. But um so yeah, and while while you're suffering on that, tell me the you just played the biggest show of your life. It's party time after. What's what's the band doing? Uh, the catering Ooh. company at this hypothetical Blue Ridge can serve you guys any food item you want. What What's the go-to meal oh. on that night? Well, can we go anywhere afterwards? Sure, they got a limo service and everything. It's an H2 limo. All right, so we're going to go to a casino, and whatever my payout was for that festival, I'm going to gamble my money. Everyone's gonna have a blast. They can get, they can do whatever they want. They can party. My my way of partying. I'm just gonna drink waters and try to make some money. What, After that, what's what's over. your what's your casino game? Um, I just like running like just like the numbers game. I'm not much of like a, I'm not like you know that like so like roulette points. roulette. Like, yeah, like black yeah. black like, if black five casino, or something. Yeah, if I were a, any of the ones that you have to pull the lever, I'm not like I've been to a casino like once or twice. But this is what I would do. I, also, the casino I went to was in Atlantic City. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, what I would do is do that, and my bands would my band would be having a blast. We'd be with like Motionless and White, Falling in Reverse, whoever I don't know, whoever would be whoever would want to hang out with us. Maybe, maybe no one wants to hang out with us. Who cares? <laughs> but we're eating buffalo chicken mac and cheese calzones at catering. Buffalo, wait, 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 wait. Buffalo chicken mac and cheese calzone. Yeah, we got those out in New England. I've They're never insane. that that doesn't exist over here. At least I've never seen that in California, and I would I would eat the oh. shit out of that right there for sure. It's so good, yeah. And we got this stuff called boom boom sauce. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like a sweet and spicy like. I don't even fucking know sauce, but boom, it's boom. the best thing ever. So I'd be dipping that and that. And uh, yeah, to wash it down, I'd say we'd, if we were to get like an unhealthy like soda, I'd say like, I'd say like, I want some like Sprite or Coca Cola just to wash that shit down. Cause like, I can't eat something at that like limit without like, some fruity drink to wash it down or some sort of caffeinated like carbonated drink you know i can't just wash that down with water that's gross Sorry. gotta have like so many flavors with something at that level so that's what i do casino run everyone's having a blast and we're crushing crushing big extra large buffalo chicken mac and cheese calzones with boom boom sauce I've had really a lot of calzones, style. but I've never had a calzone that like wasn't an Italian calzone. So I'm like, I'm thinking, have I been just been missing this other world of awesome food stuff put in a calzone my whole life? It apparently sounds like it. <laughs> I, I need to eat Fast. that. I need to eat that. Bro, and Italians are good though. Italian calzones, man, really good. Hell yeah. I really enjoy those. I, I just like all oh, calzones, man. They they don't <laughs> stop. They're just great. Kai, is there anything that we did not discuss today that you that you uh, would like to to bring up real quick, and or something else you want to plug before we let you go? And thank you for your time, brother. I will. Well, first off, thank you. I, I really enjoyed being here. It's fun. Uh, you know, you're my homie, bro. It's been a blast, and it was great collabing on that song with you on the AM um, Fall track. Hell yeah, thank you. Up? Hell yeah, that shit's sick. Um, so. Remember our song Breathe for Me that came out with Patient 67 back in like last year? Okay. So we got that. We're doing a part two of that song. There's going to be no feature, but it's heavier. Um, it's called Cast Away. That should be the next release. That's going to be like our heaviest release as we kind of siphon into like this more uh, 
rock slash post hardcore vibe again. Like we were getting heavy, and then yeah, it was breed for me right there. So it's gonna be a part two of that, and we're really excited. And that that's that's probably the last thing I'll plug right now is that breathe, get ready for breathe for me part two. Is it's is apology? Snack. I'm really excited. almost is apology almost always the last song in the set just due to the success of it. Yeah, we play repeated apology the last time last song of the set usually. Everyone does that bark and we conclude it. It's nice. Cool. Good old Rue. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. So I yeah, mean, it's, it's a beggar. It's always fun having that one there. You guys got Thanks, a, a, a ton I, of I jams. I, I like the Hasman Hotel cover. I mean, there's there's so many in your catalog. I'm excited to hear. You said you're debuting a deathcore band in the very near future. That's uh, that's going to be gonna awesome. Be cool. uh, but, dude, thank you so much yeah. for, for hanging and uh, just you know giving some advice. And when things go wrong... If you're watching, if you're in a band and you're watching and and your your backing tracks or your click goes out, you got to be ready to have a plan B. Otherwise, you're just gonna sound like ass. So so be ready. And that's <laughs> that was a really cool story that you told. But thanks, dude, for being a, a good sport regarding yeah. the trivia. And uh, I'm wishing you nothing but su- but success, dude. Cheers. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to throw this on YouTube. Uh, it'll it'll debut Ooh. tomorrow morning, but I'll send you a link late tonight. You'll probably be catching some Zs, but you'll see it. You'll see it uh, later tonight. Sounds but good. Kai, I appreciate you, sir. Late night! Give me a hell yeah! That's love, BG. Love you guys. Cheers, brother. Have, Have a great night. night. Thank you. That's right. I'll see you. Peace out, guys.